So we're going to talk about clinical indications and contraindications for the test. Uh, first of all, as far as indications for spirometry, spirometry, they fall into four major categories. One is diagnostic. So we want to perform a lung function test when the patient comes to us and they're complaining of shortness of breath or you hear abnormal breath sounds or you see an abnormal chest x-ray. The way that we evaluate that is through the measurement of lung function. We also use it from a diagnostic perspective to follow patients that have disease and to look at preoperative risk. We use it to monitor individuals. So once we've identified them with a disease process like asthma or COPD or chronic bronchitis, we can use it then to follow them longitudinally over time to see if our interventions, our therapy, whatever we're recommending has had a positive or no effect. We use it to monitor patients when they've had an exacerbation and you know how are they responding to treatment and we also use it to monitor people that are in occupations of high risk. We also in some countries use it for evaluating disability. So some people their lung function deteriorates so far that they can no longer work or work in the environment where they were working before. So we use it for that. And, and then the final category is just grouped into other. We use spirometry in clinical trials. And one of my jobs now is to look at responses to therapy in clinical trials, set up the protocols so that we're not measuring the variability of the process or the instrument, but we're measuring what's happening to the patient. The World Health Organization related to lungs in general has two major initiatives. One is the GOLD initiative. And if you look at their flow chart, even in the 2023 release, the very first thing is, is that spirometry is needed to establish the diagnosis of COPD. So how do we define COPD? Is it time to move beyond the obstruction? Uh, there's some dialogue related to, you know, what is COPD? Does it just entail obstructive lung disease or does it mean emphysema also just by itself uh, as far as Gina goes, the other very large initiative by the World Health Organization to care for patients with hyperreactive airways disease, they say also perform spirometry with a bronchodilator 
as part of the initial identifier as to whether or not you have asthma or hyperreactive airways disease. So how are we doing related to these initiatives? Gold says you need to do spirometry in order to identify COPD. Gina says you need to do spirometry to identify hyperreactive airways disease. Here's a paper that was published in CHEST, and they looked at a cohort of individuals that were part of a large um, uh, healthcare plan, five large healthcare plans. They looked at the number of patients over 40 years old that had been diagnosed with COPD. They identified 5,000 individuals. Of those 5,000 individuals, only 32% of them had had spirometry even though they had been diagnosed with COPD. So I'm not sure how many other diseases there are where you would treat them or call them a specific disease entity without having an objective test to say that they had that disease. And we know that Dr. Hutchinson originally described the vital breath because of its link to mortality, but that is still true today. So the Framingham study, a large epidemiologic study that has been going on for decades, still linked your forced vital capacity with the prediction of all-cause mortality. So it is still your vital breath. So in the original spirometry technical standard, they only had one thing related to a contraindication, and that was an MI within the last month. In the new 2019 spirometry standard, they have a longer list of relative contraindications. Those being things like uh, recent eye surgery within a week or recent brain surgery within a month. These are all related to the increase in interthoracic or inter uh, body generally pressure when you do that blasting maneuver. And they actually added even hypertension or hypotension to the list of relative contraindications. So maybe checking a blood pressure before you do a test on an individual who is on either hypotensive or hypertensive medicine is not a bad thing because maybe one to two percent of all subjects that perform maneuver will have either near syncope or some can even have a complete syncopal event. Thì 
thì mình đau thế cái mình nó sẽ hiện tượng nguy rồi nhưng mà mình đau huyết áp như vậy thì mình xe cái người mà khi mà huyết áp thấp quá cao quá đo thì phải có thể là cho bệnh nhân nó sẽ chóng mặt cái người nó cứ khó chịu quá So the the contraindication list actually came from a colleague that uh, published in Thorax, either a contraindication, the reason to avoid the lung function, and was it a relative or absolute? And so this paper actually kind of explains what were on this chart here where they came from and, and what the significance of them are. So certainly, uh, if you have an ascending aortic aneurysm, there's the risk of rupture of that aneurysm from increasing interthoracic pressure. So that in this person's eye was an absolute or relative contraindication. In the 2019 list, it's all under relative contraindication. Thì mình thấy là cái cái phiên mẹ 2011 đó, thì có thì kê những cái chứng gì đó và những cái lý do để mà tại sao mà mình chống cái chứng gì đó Thế ví dụ như là mình có cái tình trạng mạch chủ đi ờ, thì mình thấy là nếu mà phần đường này có thể có thể bị bỏ tình trạng mạch đó thì đó là cái lý do Thì cái bạn 2019 đó, thì nó cũng lấy được cái bạn cái cái khâu chứng gì đó từ 2011 là đưa ra And I I will make one more comment on a slide and then I'm going to stop there and if you want to have a discussion and then we can go into calibration and stuff like that. And that is related to the pandemic. So when the pandemic hit, spirometry and really all lung function testing initially was stopped uh, just because of the expert that was associated with performing a maneuver. Thì chúng ta thấy là câu chuyện mà do một cái không nói về cái uh, việc mà đo cái chức năng hấp trong cái lúc mình Covid á thì mình thấy là mình phải đó là không có đo cái năng hấp So, but probably the biggest lesson that we learned from this is using a bacterial filter on a spirometer is really an essential component of that spirometer equipment and I think I will stop with that and then you can add on to your yeah.